Yesterday, Iran claimed it made two major advancements in producing nuclear fuel. In Tehran, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad oversaw the insertion of Iran's first domestically produced nuclear fuel rod into a research reactor. Iranian News reported that on the same day, a new generation of Iranian centrifuges began operating in central Iran. Tehran also indicated that it is about to cut off oil shipments to several European countries to retaliate against Egypt. EU sanctions. Although U.S. officials and analysts acknowledge that Iran has the capability to advance its nuclear program even further, many have also stressed that they are not overly concerned about the Islamic Republic. At the U.S. State Department, spokeswoman Victoria Nuland was asked how the government views yesterday's announcements from Iran. She dismissed the news as being insignificant. Sanctions but you don't, you don't see the, 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 this announcement as, a, as a, something that needs to be responded to as I as said, a provocation that needs to be responded to. As I've said, we don't see this as big news. Joel Rubin is a director at the Plowshares Fund, a special interest group whose goal is to eliminate nuclear weapons worldwide. His response to Iran's nuclear advancements was also surprising. It means that Iran is trying to signal to the rest of the world, take us seriously, we can continue to develop our nuclear program. And it's a bit of a challenge to the international community. At the same time, the international community needs to keep its calm and recognize that while this is possibly an advance and it still needs to be ver verified, it doesn't mean that Iran is suddenly stepping into a, a nuclear weapons program. It is a challenge and this reminds us as to why we really need to have engagement in a diplomatic discussion about this program. Rubin also stressed that even though Iran is clearly capable of developing nuclear weapons, they have not yet elected to do so. There's a general view in the scientific community and also in the intelligence community of the U.S. and the IAEA that there is knowledge and technical capacity inside of Iran to continue to go further if they so choose. And that's the key item. Iran has not chosen to make nuclear weapons. That's the consensus of Israeli intelligence, of U.S. intelligence community. So that's a political decision. But from a technical perspective, they do have trained scientists. They do have knowledge. They do have uh, mechanics and mechanical opportunities on the ground to create uh, a more advanced nuclear program. But again, they have not decided to turn that into a weapons program. This relaxed response coming from the United States blends with the lax treatment Iran has enjoyed in the United Nations. Yet even the UN's International Atomic Energy Agency has finally begun to raise red flags about Iran's nuclear program. In November, the IAEA reported that it had found uranium enriched to 20% in the Iranian city of Qom. Uranium used for civilian energy purposes must be enriched to 3.5%. Uranium used for medical purposes must be enriched to 20%, a long and difficult process. However, enriching uranium from 20% to 90% is comparatively easy, and 90% enriched uranium is the grade required for nuclear weapons. The trumpet has projected for years that Iran will not only develop nuclear weapons, but also dominate the Middle East and become the king of the South. It has also predicted America's weak response, which is on display once again this week. Iran's nuclear provocations and pushy foreign policy are in fact big news. Keep watching thetrumpet.com for the real significance of Iran's nuclear push.